Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can apply formatting to a shape, you need to click it to select it. If selecting a text box or word art as a shape, ensure that you click on its border so that the border appears as a solid line. That indicates that the shape itself has been selected and not its text. Once the shape has been selected, you will see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected object. At the left end of the Format tab is the Insert Shapes button. The large scroll box in this group contains quick access to the shapes that you can insert and functions in the exact same way that the Shapes button on the Insert tab does. To the right of that are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape button and the Edit Text button. For shapes drawn by hand, such as the scribble shape, you can click the Edit Shape button after drawing the object to display its editing points. You can then click and drag the editing points to change the contours of the shape. If using Publisher 2013, you will see the Change Shape button. You can click this button to view a drop-down listing of the various shapes you can substitute for the selected shape. Note that this button appears within the Shape Styles button group on this tab in Publisher 2010. You can click the Edit Text button to add text to a selected shape or edit text within an existing shape by placing the shape into its text editing mode. In the Shape Styles section, you can make stylistic changes to your shape that affect the appearance of the fill and line of the shape. You can scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box of preset shape appearances and click on the one that you would like to apply to your shape. You can also use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to customize the appearance of your shape. You can use the Shape Fill drop-down to fill the inside of your shape with one of the many available colors, pictures, gradients, or textures available. Note that this button is unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable area, such as lines or arrows. To select a fill color, click on one of the color choices shown in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, you can select the More Fill Colors command to open up the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. You can click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or you can click the Custom tab and then select any color you want. If you need an exact Pantone color match, you can select one from this tab. At the bottom of all three tabs is a transparency slider. You can use this to set the level of color transparency to apply to your selected color. Once you are done selecting your color, click the OK button to apply it to your shape. To fill a selected shape with another sampled color from within the publication, select the Sample Fill Color command from the drop-down menu and then click the color in the page that you wish to fill with the shape. If you apply a fill effect to a shape and then want to remove it, you can select the No Fill command in the Shape Fills button drop-down menu to remove any fill effect. You can insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect by choosing the Picture command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu to open up the Select Picture dialog box. In this dialog box, you can navigate to and then select the picture to use as the fill effect for the selected shape. You can apply a gradient to a shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the gradient command in this drop-down menu and then clicking on a preset gradient you want to apply to a shape. To add a texture to a shape, choose the Texture command and then click on the texture to apply from the choices shown in the side menu. You can also click the Pattern command from this drop-down menu to open up the Fill Effects dialog box and the Pattern tab will be displayed. Here you can select a foreground and background color from the color pickers available. Then you can simply click on the desired pattern in the pattern section and then click the OK button to apply it as a fill effect for the selected shape. Back in the Shape Styles button group on the Format tab, you will find the Shape Outline drop-down button. 
The choices that you make here affect the appearance of the lines in the shape. This is also the button that you can use to alter the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as the line shape or the arrow shape. Once you click this button, you will see that you can select a color shown in the color palette of choices to change the line color of your selected shape. To remove the line color, select the No Outline choice from this drop-down menu. To change the width of your shape's outline, make a selection from the side menu of choices that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Weight command. Likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Dashes command. If formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, you can change the endpoints on the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Arrows command. Also, like the Fill color, you can also select the Pattern command to create a patterned line. If using Publisher 2010, then in the Shape Styles button group on the Format tab, you will see the Change Shape button which you can click to view a drop-down listing of shapes that you can substitute for the selected shape within the publication. If using Publisher 2013, you can click the Shape Effects drop-down button to select a type of shape effect, grouped by category, to apply to the selected shape from the drop-down menu that appears. If using Publisher 2010, you can click the Shadow Effects drop-down button in the Shadow Effects button group on this tab to select a shadow style. You can roll over the Shadow Color command in this drop-down menu to choose a color for your shadow. To the right of that button, you can click the Nudge Shadow buttons to nudge the shadow in the indicated direction. You can click the Turn Shadow On or Off button to toggle the display of the shadow on or off. Also, if using Publisher 2010, then in the 3D Effects section, you can click the 3D Effects drop-down button to apply a 3D shape effect. At the bottom of this drop-down menu, you can roll over the 3D Color command to select a 3D color. You can select Depth, Direction, Lighting, or Surface to change any of those aspects as well. To the right of that, use the Tilt buttons to tilt the 3D object in the direction shown by the arrows. You can also click the 3D On Off button to toggle the 3D effects on or off. In Publisher 2013 and 2010, the buttons shown in the Arrange button group on the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected shape. You can click the Text Wrapping drop-down to select one of the preset text wrapping options. If you have overlapping shapes, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons to change the order that the shapes overlap each other. You can click the Align button to choose from one of the available alignment options. You can use the Group button to group multiple selected shapes together as a single unit. You can use the Ungroup button to break a grouped shape back into its separate components. You can also use the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected shape. Like images, you can use the Size section to resize a shape. Use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the Shape Height or Shape Width spinner boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected shape. You can also click the Measurement button to display the measurement panel where you can enter very specific measurements for the text box or shape. shape. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.